Peace to the family is the Hermistic representing www.hermistic.com. Here with another episode of The Truth is Stranger Than Fiction. This is a live presentation, so uh, I'm very ecstatic in a form of trance. And I just hope that you enjoy this presentation. Uh, with no further ado, let's begin this build. create something that's timeless? How do you create something that, that lives forever? How does a player go down in history as being one of the all-time greats? And it always comes back to one, loving what you do and having a passion for what you do. So you can't achieve anything in life. You can't achieve a certain level, a certain standard of excellence if you don't first enjoy what you do which means obsessing over every little detail that goes into it. it. Just as you do in winemaking, just as you do in building a watch, just as I do in building my game, it is obsessing over your craft to the most minuscule detail and trying to create something that you believe transcends time. That's why I am Vino. Peace to the family. And from his mouth, from the from the horse's mouth, we have Vino, which we're tying into this Kobe Bryant energy, Dionysus energy, and ultimately Osiris energy. So I have a lot of information to get to. So I hope that you guys are patient with me as we go through this stream of consciousness. This will be in a slideshow presentation, and then there will be a lot of text because I don't want you to think that this is from me, that this is purely a literal download that I use the internet to kind of confirm this particular download and um, connecting different things. And these connections could be purely coincidence and that's okay. But let's just look at these coincidences and really understand the world that we're living in, understand mythology, understand entertainment, understand ritual and its purpose and its place as opposed to thinking that it is something negative and shouldn't be dealt with so i'm going to check the chat room make sure that everything is copacetic hope that everybody is doing well today uh hopefully everybody can hear me okay and we're just going to continue we're going to deal with this build so first and foremost we're dealing with greco interpretatio so when we say dionysus we're really saying Osiris. So Herodotus was one of the earliest authors to engage in this form of interpretations. In his observations of Egyptians, he established the Greco-Egyptian equivalents. So we have Amon Zeus, Osiris Dionysus, Ptah Hephaestus, and Ptah, and Hephaestus, Ptah is Egyptian, Hephaestus is Greek. Osiris is Egyptian, Dionysus is Greek, but Osiris is much older and ancient, Dionysus is much modern, Hephaestus is much modern, 
Vulcan is even more modern and Pata is more ancient. So it, when we reference Dionysus, we're referencing Osiris. When we reference Vulcan, we're referencing Pata. And this is the energy that coincidentally Kobe Bryant held. Peace to the family. And it's not just the two gods who Heroditus identifies with each other. He identifies all of the Egyptian gods with the Greek gods. In fact, he speaks various temples in Egypt dedicated to a variety of Greek gods. The problem is that if you travel to Egypt, and even back then, you would not find any temples to Greek gods. And so there is no reason to think that the Egyptians in Herodotus' day would even see their gods as the same as Greek. So, like I said, Greece is not as old as Egypt. Egypt is, I mean, Greece is rather modern when we're talking about Egyptian energy. And so this is important in discussing this conversation as we bring up these equivalents, okay? So within these particular mythologies, there's a mythology of the dying God, which is mostly known as Osiris, but has metamorphosized into the Dionysian rites. And we have to connect this to Kobe Bryant, but we have to have some form of background. So ultimately, it's all about the Divine Mother, which is Venus, which is Venus is the third brightest star next to the sun and the moon. Venus is one of the main luminaries in our understanding, at least in the ancient understanding. It represented enlightenment or hidden knowledge. OK, so. Within these particular deities, whether you have Mercury or Mars, even you have an underworld deity, Hades and things of that nature. So with Dionysus, with Osiris, the interesting thing about these that with these deities in ancient times was that they actually died, which is kind of crazy, because when you think about gods, gods are supposed to live forever based upon their perfectness, right? Their psychic abilities to understand nature and just live forever. So this whole idea of astrology and magic is actually supporting what's happening because when we reference particular things like Kabbalah and magic and astrology and don't understand its true context, we are utter we are uttering spells that support this matrix kabbalah and all of these things and the tree of life and all of these things form the matrix or form the lockdown that we live in so when rituals take place and we say that's not a ritual that's purely coincidence the energy continues on and we don't understand what's happening so Peace to everybody. Um, like I said, I got a lot of things to do today. And this was just on my heart and on my mind. So like I said earlier, Pata is linked to Vulcan or Hephaestus. Vulcan and Hephaestus, they have an interesting connection, okay? Uh, they have an actual day of worship, which is August 23rd. It's called Vulcanalia. Volcanus is the god, including fire of volcanoes, deserts, metalworking, and the forge. He is often depicted with a blacksmith's hammer, and Volcanalia is the annual festival held August 23rd in his honor. Okay, Pata is the patron of craftsmen, especially sculptors. His high priest was called chief controller of craftsmen, the divine blacksmith. Ptah was originally the local deity of Memphis. Greeks identified Ptah with Hephaestus, a.k.a. Vulcan. So just bringing up these connections because they're going to show up to be important later because we're just providing background and 
actual coincidences. So Volcanalia is August 23rd is actually Kobe Bryant's birthday as well. So that's just either a connection. But another interesting connection is Pata is married to Sekhmet. And if you study classical astrology and if you study classical Egyptology and classical astronomy, the formation of Venus wasn't just a planet. At first, Venus was a comet and Venus was a vicious and ferocious comet that you have to do your research. You have to understand there are things called Bronze Age, Iron Age, Golden Age. These ages are marked by devastation um, after death, um, before Christ. This is actual cataclysmic events that take place based upon the interaction between Earth and Venus. OK, so the astrology is way more deeper than, you know, personality type of deals. So if it was just personality, they wouldn't really deal with it in elite social, uh, not even social, but private secret societies. They just simply wouldn't deal with it. But to personify this energy, the ancients signified Venus through Sekhmet and Pata was married to Sekhmet. Okay. Kobe Bryant in this scenario, if we're looking at the mythology, because I didn't preface this conversation that I am a reincarnationist. I believe that we are all reincarnated souls and some of us are not reincarnated souls. Some of us are empty vessels. Okay. But when it comes to you having a reincarnated soul, that means you have a mythology and the things that people write about, the things that people journal about throughout the ages is simply talking about your energy. So if you don't understand mythology, mythology is not important to you. I get it. And I'm not trying to force it down your throat. What I'm saying is if you want to understand your life path, for real, you will understand your astrology and then combine it with the mythology surrounding that particular star. So if we understand that Pata is Vulcan and Pata Vulcan's day is August 23rd, then we can easily identify this energy and know it's not just one Pata. There are many Patas. There are many Sekhmets. There are many Venuses because it's just fragmented energy of celestial knowledge. So in studying mythology, you awaken that within yourself. And so this is the more core message that I'm trying to get across in making these particular connections. But then again, you interpret it however you need to interpret it. But when we look at Pata, when we look at Sekhmet and we look at Kobe and we look at Vanessa, we're looking at Osiris, we're looking at Isis, we're looking at the dying and resurrected God. How do we resurrect the God? By understanding his mythology, understanding the reincarnation cycles within our family, if we truly do have a soul. Okay, that's the main understanding that I'm trying to bring about. And so hopefully that makes sense in these connections. But Vanessa... <laughs> is a, a play off of Venus is the, the women of Venus. Okay. And another word for beauty. So, so moving forward into the Dionysian right or understanding firmly that Dionysus is not the paintings of Dionysus, but it's actually Osiris and that the more mythology, Bobby Hemmett even said, if you wanted to learn more about Osiris, then you would learn more about Dionysus because that's more of the full energy. So when it comes to Dionysus, peace to the family. Dionysus was the Olympian God of wine, vegetation, pleasure. Okay. And I showed this video at the beginning and I'm going to show it again. create something that's timeless? How do you create something that, that lives forever? How does a player go down in history as being one of the all-time greats?
always comes back to one, loving what you do and having a passion for what you do. So you can't achieve anything in life. You can't achieve a certain level, a certain standard of excellence if you don't first enjoy what you do. Which means obsessing over every little detail that goes into it. Just as you do in winemaking, just as you do in building a watch, just as I do in building my game, is obsessing over your craft to the most minuscule detail and trying to create something that you believe transcends time. That's why I am Vino. So right there, he says that he is Vino, okay? He is Dionysus, the god of wine. And he literally changed his name from Black Mamba to Vino, meaning that he ages with time. And these are all Dionysian tropes. And the fact of him coming out with a watch named Dionysus more or less ties into the, the, the deeper things that have been going on as just keeping up with the theme of the truth is stranger than fiction. By this time, we have hours and hours of coincidences and particular rituals that are being played out um, on TV through sports and media and things of that nature based upon people either who know their mythology or don't know their mythology. There's a reason why these particular events happen and they affect us in a certain type of way. Or it's purely coincidence. That's up to you to decide. But Dionysus, one of his main colors was purple and gold. He's sent to, he has a mercenant tresses embroidered in robes of gold and purple, okay? Uh, the god of wine, the god of ecstasy, the god of trance. So when I think about how I feel, it's more of a trance, it's more of a stream of consciousness, it's more of me saying things that aren't really my personal words. It's important to understand how to do it for yourself, but it takes a lot of study and a lot of correspondence throughout the Catholic Church every day is designated to a saint but within each and every saint is a particular ancestral energy that has been hijacked and it needs research from you if that's your birthday is 365 days in a year really 360 days and every day has a particular energy shit every hour has a particular energy so it takes a lot of self-interest to understand who you are at a God level. And then from that point, that's a perspective. That's an understanding beyond the human understanding. So that's what astrology can help you to do. Beyond personality traits and things of that nature, mastering your existential lives. What about your internal lives? What about your internal understanding of yourself and reincarnation? Because that's what the science of astrology is. That's the whole purpose of it. To keep track of the ancestors. And when to conceive. When to even have sex. And to time your menstrual cycle with the moon. And things of that nature. Because the ancients knew it took nine months to conceive. So it's best to have sex on this day. And align your menstruation up with this day. Because we want to get granddaddy back up in this joint. He had more information to teach us, but we have lost that. So when these things happen, you know, even before this whole incident happened, I had a dream about it and I put up, put out a video called Scorpio and death outlining this whole process. So that's my alignment to the situation, but more or less, I don't want it to be necessarily about me because generally we are all one. When we understand this particular energy and within this realm we call creation, there is this thing called hierarchy. There is this thing called the head. We have hierarchy in our bodies, right? Our head is a priority, even though it doesn't do all of the heavy lifting. It doesn't really get us anywhere. It matters, right? Because say, for instance, you know, we don't have our head or we quote unquote, lose our mind, then 
we don't if you lose your mind then you know cancel christmas right so when we think about humanity there's an additional hierarchy that exists whether you want to accept it or not you could feel no <laughs> that's not true we're all the same and things of that nature but if you are understanding anything about the cosmos that everything rotates around a larger body mass and the body mass is generated by particular energy and spiritual energy so the person that cultivates that spiritual energy represents a larger mass of energy and that brings the attraction and the rotating forces around it this is where you get stars from stars are an in independent source of energy that maintains and builds their own energy and then when maintaining their energy they have a gravitational force planets have moons and things of that nature rotating around it based upon its energetic force so when it comes to you and your success in your life and your love have you generated any energy within yourself to begin to have people orbit your uh, uh solar system because as above, so below. This is another reason why you study astrology. So, you got Osiris. Like the most perfect deity in the history of deities. The green man, he, vegetation, wine. You understand? Perfect. But his legacy is death. And then it flips to Dionysus and then to Bacchus. Because the more we forget, the more evil this shit becomes. That don't nothing come before you or after you. The alpha, the omega. See, we caught in alpha males and beta males, but... What about the Omega males, the gods? So what we have is a breaking of a heart. And that's perfectly fine to see grown men crying on TV because their heart is broken. But the beauty about having your heart broken is that the light can now shine through. So what we have more is healing than sorrow and grief. Especially if we continue to have conversations like this. So in reference to Dionysus, we have Dionysus, a horned infant. A common expression of Dionysus is the bull is the father of the serpent and the serpent is the father of the bull. They hailed the God by his title, thunderer, bullhorn, bullface, in the belief that he incarnated the sacrificial beef, beast, sorry. So beef, so his parents named him after the famous beef of Kobe. They didn't, they, they, that's, that's what it say. Maybe show me a different story. And so maybe it's purely coincidence. Cause, cause even my name is Kyrie, but my mom, my mom say, you know, I just named you Kyrie. Cause I thought it was different. But when I research my name and get all the downloads from my name, it's like, you ain't just name me Kyrie Cohn. Like, something extra happened. So what I'm saying is, sometimes we do shit randomly, purely out of quote-unquote coincidence. But it's that's the most divine shit that we probably not even fully aware of, based upon our understanding of forgetting the astrology and and we still got more slides to get to but like i said it's a full download it's a full picture so if you want a quick segmented you know quick ending you know what i'm saying wrong channel wrong 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 youtuber <laughs> uh yeah so moving forward so i come out with a video like shadow work my nagas and people like you know my life is going great hood mystic i don't need shadow work right now and I'm like, wait a second, wait a second. What is this? My life is going great shit that people is automatically up on now all of a sudden living their best life Instagram filter shit that's going on. We all got a shadow that need to be worked out. 
And so what the shadow has become is people's perception of you versus the work that you need to do. The most heartbreaking part about this whole situation is that we look to Kobe Bryant and people of that same ilk as perfect. We have a person that travels back and forth on a helicopter, beautiful children, talented children, Emmy, nom Emmy winner, Grammy winner, five championships, 18 all-star appearances, beautiful wife, multi homes, travel the world. Everybody know Kobe. He got a few blemishes, but no, he, he perfect. You can't discredit this man. You, there ain't nothing, no, no real blemish. Cause the little case, he, he was found not guilty. It was dismissed. So here we have a, a, a God in pure form. Got a show called detail Mamba mentality. All about the kids said, no, I got to take a helicopter to be around my kids. That's moral excellence. And you know what's supposed to happen when you morally excellent? You is not supposed to die tragically. You you not it's not supposed to happen. The people that deserve to die is the the people who do bad stuff, the corrupt people, the evil people. J you know, uh, uh, Epstein die in prison. We we don't even think of, you don't even say shit. You know what I'm saying? Because he deserved that, right? Kobe didn't deserve that. So this is what makes it so sad. But Listen, shadow work is for the entire population. Psychology is for the entire population because you either have a soul or you don't. You got to be very weary of the person who don't want to do inner work. And they could be the closest person to you because that could be an indication that they're not trying to generate no energy. They trying to be a morally excellent person. And what is the reward for that? The same is is strippers down in Atlanta still live and kicking. OK, doing a damn thing, making it rain right now. So this moral excellent idea that we thought was going to be a thing is really chaos. It's really no morals. It's really about who's generating the energy and who is psychically protecting themselves by invoking their own shadow, invoking their own Cthulhu. They, because this is our repressed self. This is our double. This is our doppelganger. And if you don't deal with it, it begins to cause havoc in your life. Okay. And that's why I specifically brought that up at the beginning of the year. Because like I said, I'm dealing with spiritual channels and spiritual energy. I don't work. I don't maintain a level of normalcy with my shit. I'm 24 seven plugged in to the goddamn celestial downloads. I'm got a C I got a CB four on this bitch. 10, four copy going live on it right now. So that's why this information is slightly different. So in dealing with hidden history, right? We're not dealing with surface stuff at this point. We're dealing with the different levels of Western civilization and how it's created. If we deal with the truth is stranger than fiction, hours and hours and hours is created off of our ancestors and the disruption of the ancestral lineage. Through sacrifice, through through sorrow, through grief, through the most gruesome shit that you could ever imagine. And do you wonder what's wrong with black people? Because we are a unit. When you cut off the head, the body can no longer function. We got bodily hierarchy. We have humanistic hierarchy. I don't know if you ever been around a person that is special. You might go to the mall. Don't nobody notice your ass. 
But say, for instance, you go with a person who's holding a particular energy. Everybody's like, hey, I haven't seen you in a while. Oh, my God, I can't believe. Give me a hug. I miss you. And you looking at him like, damn, or her like, damn. How? See, it's pheromones and shit. Internal shit that be going on with humans. And you like, damn, I look better than him. I look better than her. How was they getting it? Pheromones. Inner shit. The idea is that he's morally excellent. I'm not saying that he was or wasn't. Nobody is morally excellent is my point. The idea of shadow is to move beyond morally excellent. Because that's a that's an ideology that will never be achieved. And the moral excellence that's been established has been established by the invaders of this land. So we're through, I need to get more money. I need to get more status. I need to be this and that and this and that is actually an ideology that's not of ancestral understanding or is not even an understanding of, of inner realization or shadow work or none of that. Because the re reality is that I'm not morally perfect. I got all types of moralities within me. And I'm not even striving to be morally perfect, but I'm trying to understand who I am as a reincarnated being. And there's stuff about my soul that happened many lifetimes ago that I have literally no control over. So in, represent, in representing the fertility that we are dealing with, the abundance, the prosperity, that's being unleashed through the understanding of releasing of ritualistic energy. And it don't got to be an Illuminati cabal in the background setting things up for it to be a ritual. You could wake up and have a shitty job for seven years and that could be a seven year ritual to free you to live your best life as a business owner. You can have a ritual to wake up and shoot J's for an hour before you go to school. That's a ritual. Rituals don't always have to be planned. More or less, our rituals are usually, especially if we don't have a level of rites of passage or a system to work through, then our life becomes an initiation. Our life becomes a ritual of self-realization. And it's beyond our conscious understanding. So I don't get into the Illuminati conspiracy, but I do get into rituals and the actual modality of sacrifice based upon. I didn't create this world. I was born into it. And understanding what takes place without it being right or wrong. I can understand the mythology that's being played out. Nor do I believe in coincidences based upon my study. I believe that everything is right and exact within divine timing. And whatever happens is going to happen. But death is not a real thing. Death is an illusion. We just transition to different forms and higher consciousness. So connecting Dionysus to Pan. Dionysus is known to fall from Mount Olympus. He got kicked out of Mount Olympus for being too perfect. And then he becomes the God of the underworld, but it's usually a lot of snakes and mountains associated with it. And when you reference the plane, it had a snake and then he was actually, this actually took place on a mountain. So therefore it could be a purely coincidence. But in reference in Pan, Dionysus, and Osiris, this is the only God that actually dies. So in understanding the level of rights and things of that nature, you can take for it how you will. It could be a purely coincidence or it could be a mythology playing out within our with with our eyes. You know, my wife always talks about Harry Potter and the muggles and how the muggles 
whatever magic is taking place, they don't even see it. They just be, it be Voldemort and Harry Potter be doing some wild shit. And then the muggles, it just be like, no, oh, it's a normal day. Can't believe that happened. You know, so I'm just not a muggle, you know, personally. So moving forward, man, shout out to Love Lift Life, Mad Titan for the donation. I really do appreciate that. Um, you know, just shout y'all out, man, and appreciate everybody on the live listening. Um, glad y'all feel me on this because, you know, this is not something that I feel like I imagine that people would feel. I would hope that people would feel, but then again, it's like maybe this is too left field. So I'm just in my Dionysus Osiris ecstatic trance at this particular point. And, um, so that Sunday, the Grammys and Kobe Bryant and all this happened. Stephen King got a show on HBO. Now, if you know anything about the truth is stranger than fiction is always HBO. Putting out shows in alignment with particular events. And it's always on a Sunday. Juice World, Nipsey. Sunday Energy. And these particular shows is always airing Sunday prime time. But this one show called The Outsider came on on Sunday and it was talking about it just took a left turn. At first, it was just like this um, murder mystery about some, you know, some dude who killed somebody and then. Or they say he killed somebody, but he like, I ain't killed nobody. And they like got footage of him. And the interesting thing is they got footage of him in two different places at the same time. And they're like, they still think he did it. So when he taking him to court, he ended up getting killed. So they never get to figure out if he did it or not. So the show is trying to figure out what happened. You know what I'm saying? And now at episode four, they get into talking about El Coco. And El Coco is a monster from folklore used to scare disobedient children. There's known as Baba Yaga, the boogeyman. Um, and it was simply saying that, you know, these monsters don't particularly kill because they want to just kill like they're like negative or they're murderous. Even they feed off of the grief. They are grief eaters. The grief it spawns is the dessert. So it's this particular scene in episode four that really disturbed me because throughout the show, they kept showing this dude in prison. And it was just out of place because the story about, you know, something else. And then they just keep showing this scene about this black dude in prison and he making a shank. And I'm just like, HBO always got them shows where it just be like a storyline and then a scene that just don't make no sense. And it just throw you throw you off. And so in episode four, it got to a climax where the inmate killed himself. He just he was about to get attacked. And before he got attacked, he just killed himself. So long story short, that inmate was in jail for something that he didn't do. Because he was out of town. And so since he was out of town. Since he was out of town. They still convicted him. Had him in jail and stuff. He had DNA. And all of this type of shit. But he was innocent. And so you know. His story was never told. Terry Maitland's was never so told. And we still on episode 4. But. That ties into this Kobe shit. Because what. If that's true, then the grief eaters or El Coco is having a feast, right? They are having a feast. If grief is a food, <laughs> then it is a feast going on. So it's not a coincidence. The Outsiders is done by Stephen King. You know, you got to watch the two, Truth is Stranger Than Fiction. Hours and hours of downloads about Stephen King and his movies. And long story short, when you talk about Necronomicon, you ain't never seen no creatures. You ain't never seen no diabolical monsters nowhere. All you see is melanated people catching hell. 
Okay, so when they attack these monsters in the movie, when they have these quote unquote doppelgangers and quote unquote boogeymen, they ain't talking about your, you know, little Rico up the street. Keep getting locked up. You know what I'm saying? Keep getting locked up. I ain't do it, mama. I ain't do it. You look like you did it. Get your ass in jail. So, well, see, if we look at the world as a supernatural thing or just natural shit that we can always explain, then we're not going to understand the connection between the outsider and this Aaron Hernandez thing. Because yesterday, his wife breaks her silence. And so, you know me, I got to thinking, right? So they say this man killed, he was a, <laughs> think how crazy this shit is. He was a NFL star, <laughs> but he out here catching bodies. When have you seen that, right? When have you seen that? But if you watch the show, if you watch the documentary that just showed on Netflix, they they come out and say it's a hooded figure that looked like Aaron Hernandez that got another apartment. And they can play it like, oh, he goes back and forth. He live in a double life. But maybe it could be a particular energy of a doppel doppelganger and it can align to this energy because the shit don't make no sense. Right. But the show, The Outsider is about a literal court case and and they got footage right in the show they got the, the 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 surveillance cameras shining down on terry maitland and if you look at the aaron hernandez case they got the footage shining down on aaron hernandez like he's around his homeboys just acting like nothing ever even happened and he like i'm here i was doing this and the in the in the, in the dna you know and see when you got these higher levels of understanding of shit, you then you put it out, you know, it's certain shit where it's kind of like, um, that's beyond my comprehension. And I understand that. So I'm going to just leave it at that. But if it's in your relevant of understanding the supernatural and how it manifests in this world today, then you can just kind of take it and run with it and then understand what's really happening with a lot of these celebrities and court cases and things of that nature. And people saying, I'm innocent. I didn't do it. And then, you know, 20 years later, they do DNA tests. And it's like, well, the DNA don't particularly match. You know how many people got freed off of DNA testing from people who just knew that they was guilty, knew that they did that shit. Thousands of melanated men, thousands. So. At the end of the day. Transition. But before he transitioned, he left some messages and some clues, writings on the wall, like that, like Beyonce would say. He left the all seeing eye, unfinished pyramid, the Illuminati and John 316. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life life so this is all mythology and creating the reincarnation and having particular dialogues like i ain't do it but i ain't going out like that i gotta have this shit be known that is more to play than meets the eye that was his dying words to the world so two more slides family two more slides two more slides <laughs> So we have this rock nation brunch that takes place January 25th and that happens. But then you have Diddy and Sean at that event. And then you have the 50th birthday party with Diddy and then a surprise appearance of Kobe Bryant. So throughout the media, what you will hear a lot of times is like, well, the last time I seen Kobe was at Diddy's 50th birthday party. And so this is the same thing that happened with Nipsey Hussle. The last time I seen Nipsey was at the Rock Nation brunch. And so these actual get togethers, you know, year in, year out, 
these particular themes of these like these festive events to really build people up and establish networks and things of that nature is turning out to be way more sinister than we first thought. So, and I say all of this to say like, what's the chances, right? That the day of the Grammys, Kobe Bryant transitions. And then the house that he built, mind you, the, he got drafted. He played for the forum, but Kobe Bryant was so dynamic so powerful of an entity that they had to build him a new st stadium. So when they say the Staples Center, the house that Kobe Bryant built, that's without Kobe Bryant, that stadium don't particularly be built. If he wasn't such a transformational talent. So the day that he passes away, the Grammys has an event the same exact day. So if this is purely coincidence, then we have the, the, the workings of a higher power beyond our knowledge taking place because that coincidence is, is mind blowing. That's like so, that's so, that's so weird. That's so spiritual. That's so powerful. And it's not like if this was a one-off thing of them sacrificing energy the week of the Grammys and things of that nature, then I would have just let it be one of those things. But then you think about 2012 and the great shift in the Mayan calendar and all of these things. And Whitney Houston died 24 hours before the Grammys. And then you got to kind of think about this shit like, hold, hold the fuck up. That's either a coincidence like shit. That's a, that's, that's just the. That's a, that's a crazy coincidence. I feel something for H Whitney Houston. Like my heart, like, you know what I'm saying? I love her. You don't, you just ain't like, I got real feelings for Whitney Houston. When you turn on the Whitney, when I think about her, when I meditate on her, like, oh, I get, I get like real love. You feel me? So to, to for anything to happen to her in the physical when people talk shit about her, you know what I'm saying? I'll be like, yo, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that. I don't care. I got aunties way worse than Whitney. We, we going to chill. Kobe's the same thing. So when you talk about these particular institutions and the things that come out, the Grammy, CEO walking out of the Grammy talking about is this is corrupt is is this and that is that is you listening is you paying attention or are you mindlessly letting your children listen to this bullshit mindlessly letting your children watch this bullshit I'm gonna leave that alone so in the honor Man, for real, Jazz. I really, I really love her. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I really, like, I got emotional. Like, for real. Like, I love her, bro. And for, for the Grammys, fuck the Grammys and whatever the Grammys stand for. You feel me? They doing this shit. You know what I'm saying? And this, this particular entity, when they get all of these, it's like a, it's like a lottery or some shit. And I pray for my brothers and sisters in that industry that got to play lottery, with this shit from Otis Redding, Frankie Valens, Aaliyah, all the rappers. You know how many rappers then met an untimely demise? They got a whole wiki channel. Rappers that died this week be like 20 rappers. Okay. Cut it out. We need to change in our understanding of entertainment and things of that nature. And I know that's a hard ball to throw but you know what i'm saying we gonna keep watching this shit unfold the way it's gonna unfold and not ritualize ourselves and get ourselves in tune to what's happening within our reincarnation within our lives studying our astrology then we're gonna watch this shit unfold and once this shit unfolds what you'll see is a lot of people breaking it down i got a whole bunch of numbers and a whole bunch of shit that goes along with it 
they did this to him and da 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 da. He was assassinated and they called us nakers and all of this shit that don't got nothing to do with anything. Thinking about the energy of Osiris, thinking about the energy of Dionysus and really doing my research and understanding of what particular rites need to take place. What type of alignment do I need to step into spiritually? You know, I got the book of the dead at the crib. Look up some Osiris stuff, you know, at this point in time. And we've been talking about this Watchmen thing. If you paid attention to them, I was like, man, they doing something. They really working a whole right with this show. Keep telling y'all it's Mithraism and it's something going on. And I was, you know, showing different connections and different coincidences. And then it's just like, man, this is just beyond me at this point. Beyond me. So, like I said, this was a download. And I had a lot of shit to do. And I was going to do this video later. I didn't even want to do this shit. <laughs> but I had to kind of do this particular download. Um, oh, yeah. So, Watchmen. So, the show is called Watchmen watch like the watch that's on your wrist watchmen dr manhattan was the son of a watchmaker and um kobe bryant put out a a um watch a literal watch that was called vino so it was just interesting because it's all about the whole premise of the show is titled watch men like men who wear watches and I don't necessarily understand the coincidence completely, but I understand that that a coincidence exists between Dr. Manhattan and Kobe Bryant. And as we see at the end of Watchmen, Dr. Manhattan was, uh, you know, sacrificed at the end of the day and his energy transfer over to his wife, which is Regina King. So with that being said, let's send all prayers, thoughts, condolences, positive energy to Vanessa Bryant and Kobe Bryant's children, all of the victims of the crash, send them positive energy because trauma is non-local. What we sense is trauma and trauma can be felt for miles and miles and miles and miles and years and years and years and years. So what I do on this channel is I speak to trauma because trauma isn't something that we can alleviate in one day. But understanding trauma and learning how to heal trauma through mythology, astrology, healing the body, purifying the body, loving one another, communicating, sharing, building, expanding, understanding, all of that good shit. That was the spirit of this video. I hope it resonated with you. Hope you had something to um, research, something to look into. Hopefully you share this video, like this video. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't notified we're going to finish that astrology series up this week uh also have a book astrology explain have another book uh manipulating the matrix also have another book how to read nato charts easily and effectively all available on amazon.com or better yet visit www.hemistic.com i've revamped that website is a lot more intuitive, a lot more helpful, a lot more interactive. So if you haven't been to hoodmystic.com, be sure to visit hoodmystic.com today. Uh, be sure to share that site as well. Uh, just trying to do the best I can with the messages that my ancestors give me. And I'll continue to do that on my channel. Thanks for all my supporters at patreon.com. That's how this channel survives. And that's how this channel is alive. So if this content was like valuable to you. You liked it. You want to support this channel. Don't necessarily know how to do so. I say support this channel by supporting yourself, by going to the Patreon channel, signing up for $5 a month, and then you get monthly moon sign readings to me delivered to your email and MP3 form monthly. And that's going to begin the 3rd of February. So shout out to all my Patreon subscribers. We going strong for another month. You know, I've been building this for like two years now and it's super steady so appreciate everybody appreciate everybody's feedback um thanks for the support and shout out to kobe shout out to the 823 energy love lift life um you know 
Peace. something that's timeless? How do you create something that, that lives forever? How does a player go down in history as being one of the all-time greats? It always comes back to one, loving what you do and having a passion for what you do. So you can't achieve anything in life. You can't achieve a certain level, a certain standard of excellence if you don't first enjoy what you do which means obsessing over every little detail that goes into it. Just as you do in winemaking, just as you do in building a watch, just as I do in building my game, is obsessing over your craft to the most minuscule detail and trying to create something that you believe transcends time. That's why I am Vino.